Yeah, welcome to On Becoming a Doctor podcast. My name is Dr. Gospel. I'm a medical doctor, a life coach, and also a YouTuber. If you're a medical student, an aspiring medical student, or a medical doctor, and you're keen on living a successful life throughout medical school and also having a fulfilling medical practice, then click the subscribe button below. I've been privileged to coach medical students in hundreds of numbers over the past couple of years, and I finished as the valedictorian of my set while building a sportsman and also cutting away numerous leadership awards. So I know the in and the out of medical school, how to live a balanced, a successful life, and how to also pursue the dreams you have aside medical practice successfully. So I need you to join me every week on Sunday by 12 p.m. on this channel as I bring you value, ranging from succeeding through medical school, dealing with failures, and having the very, very difficult conversations on the podcast series I titled Unsteady Waters, the typical conversations that everyone will run away from having. So definitely, I'm inviting you to join me every Sunday by 12 p.m., and I'll be seeing you. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Gaspar Ikotokin, as you all know, you're welcome to On Becoming a Doctor series. So we are starting a new set of videos that will be airing on this channel, and I tag it on Steady Waters. Essentially, it's difficult conversations about medical school, conversations that people will tend to run away from having, will be trashing everything, the nitty gritty. So this is the very first episode, and I'm delighted to have a guest on this channel, and she'll be introducing herself right about now. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Gospel. Um, Hello everyone, my name is Odekina Ojimaojo. I'm a medical doctor and I'm currently doing my internship. I'm so glad and happy to be here on the show. Thank you for joining us. Thank so let's much. delve right into it. Okay, guys, so it's episode one, and we'll be talking about the reasons one shouldn't go to medical school. Now, especially within our country, we have a ton of persons running into hundreds of thousands applying to get into medicine. And in some instances, you have people that have applied severally. So, what really is it about medical school? Is it worth getting into, or is it something people should run away from? We'll be giving you 10 reasons. I'm going to talk about five of them, while my colleague here also talks about the other five that she feels are the reasons you should not come into medical school. As much as medical school can be appealing from the outside, it really isn't for everybody. So if you're someone you're aspiring to become a doctor, for a variety of reasons which we might mention and explore, you might really want to give deeper thoughts into that consideration. So let's hear from Dr. Faith. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, um, for me, one of the reasons to not go to medical school is the long and intense education. Medical education is very, very lengthy. Okay, okay. Um, take for instance, here in Nigeria, they say it's not really six years. They say it's six plus X years. Yeah. You understand? So X depends on a lot of factors. So imagine you get into med school and you have this time limit for yourself. Oh, okay, by the age of 23, by 24, I should be done with med school and I should move on to other things in my life. Mm -hmm. Med school might not afford you that luxury to get because you might end up spending up to 10 years, 8 to 10 years in medical school. And, um, you 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 lose your let it lose your youth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you the vibe, the excitement. I'm saying you. So by. yeah, now nah, med school is it takes it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time, and it it requires a lot of mental energy to go through that amount of time while you're in med school because you look at your mates in other departments. They are moving on with their lives. At the time you're in like your sixth year of med school, or sometimes like fifth year. Of med school, you discover that your mates in other departments, they might have gotten married, like yeah. if they are females, um, and okay. giving birth like two children already. When you're done with med school, some of your mates will have completed their family size, and here you, ha here you are, you know you won't start anything, do you understand? So, and then, um, um, if you're looking to start earning early, if you don't get into other things as a med student, if you just want to focus on your education, you'll discover that you will go into the labor force so late, and that's what that means, um, puts an impediment on your long term goals. Do you understand? So, yeah, the long time of education. Yeah, that's true. I would really agree with that. For example, myself, I spent eight years in medical school Imagine. without any issues or any challenge. You know, COVID happened, and then we had a series of ASU strikes. And I remember I started medical school with energy, like excitement. Yeah, it yeah, was crazy, yeah, the yeah. mental, everything was just. But towards the end, it was more of, I you just want to finish. Yes. So ginger. even if I was still putting in effort, it wasn't, I was literally dragging myself to that finish line. It was no longer exciting. Health, Beatrice, 
thousand. Yes, yes. It, it wasn't it wasn't as exciting as it was in the beginning. So really generally also irrespective of where you are in the world, medical training takes a long time. Yeah. You know, abroad people have to do pre med mm -hmm. and then they're now going to the main medical school. And it doesn't stop there. You have to do internship in some countries, you have to do two years of post-medical school training before you get into residency. Now, we've not even talked about residency, which for some programs, most programs generally, minimum of four years. So you're having what looks like 10 to 12 years of your life invested into education. It's something to really ponder on. Is it worth it? For some people, time is a priority, mm -hmm. and not just getting a degree or certificate. Time is one of the things they will value the most. And medical school doesn't just take your time it's jealous so when it's taking yeah. the time it tends to want to take almost everything for the duration you're in medical school so if you're hoping to get into medical school you should really put into consideration the amount of time you will spend trying to get that degree now on my on my own end i would want to point out something that we find people coming into medical school for and that's my parents are medical doctors oh, yeah, or yeah. i have relatives Very who are physicians yes. yes and it's it's very far from the reality when you are inside medical school. Like my dad works in the health health facility, health background. And anytime I see him, sometimes he'll come and pick him. You know, as a child, I used to feel like, oh, this is interesting, exciting. In the middle of the night, he'll wake him up, and I was feeling inspired. Now, as an intern, I detest being awake at night, like being in the hospital and having to. That's the most frustrating part of the job for me. I really don't mind working in the day. So the reality of practice and the reality of the training even as a student is very different Define. yes there were times i had to question really why am why am i here because initially for me personally i wanted to do aeronautical engineering in school oh, wow. yes but somehow somehow i found okay. myself in medical school yeah. and that was one of the contributing factors even though i don't have regrets because i had a fulfilling medical journey but in retrospect i would have been able to yes possibly i would have arrived at this same course but i would have been able to really think deep and realize that Having family members or relatives who are doctors is not enough reason for you to delve into medical school. I had a younger sister recently who was just thinking. I really had to probe deep and for her to come and say, okay, it's really engineering she wants to do. And immediately I got that from her. I told her not to bother coming into medical school. It's stressful. Yeah. That's the truth. Having to write tests, exams, you write exams, then you come and write so another that's exam that's that they that's call that's the professional exam. Yeah. So it's not like other places where you just write an exam and you know, like you're done with it. You have to come back, write what they call MB, professional exams, at least in the Nigerian setting. And the trauma, some, in some schools, they post these results publicly. So it's a big deal. The whole school is like aware of it. Yes. And your father, your mother, everybody is tensed at home just because, just because of, you know, medical school. So it's something you should really not delve into medical school for just because you have relatives who are doctors or you have persons around you. You might want to talk with them to ask them some questions. Ask them if they were in your shoes currently, based on the years of experience they've had in the medical setting, will they apply for medical school? And then you really have to think deep and look into yourself to decide if medical school is for, for you, you or not. Yeah. That's your oh, okay. Um, another point, another reason why you should not go to med school is the financial burden. Med school is very cost demanding. The years in training, you, it's, it requires a lot of money mm -hmm. from the tuition to um, the purchase of the textbooks. So the purchase of other things you would require, it's actually really, 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 really cost demanding. You find out that a lot of people, when they are done with med school, they have accumulated lots of debt. Where did they start from? Say you're working in a country like Nigeria where it takes years, literally years, to make up for what, okay, depending on the kind of institution you've attended, if it's yeah. public or private sector, in the private institutions where you spend like two million naira to get a medical degree. Right, so. How many years would you work to make, to make that two million naira? Do you understand? So it's actually draining, it's cost demanding. So you have to go into med school with that idea that it's actually going to take in or take cost you a lot of money. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. And that leads to my own second point. Because sometimes on the flip side, before you get into medical school, we have this idea that becoming a doctor just settles you for life. So this is talking about money now, the financial gains from being a medical doctor. The the return on investment, like what she was trying to say, is not worth it. Yeah. If you really just want to look at financial gains as it were, it's really not worth it. You know, times are changing in the world. We are having inflations. We are having 
competitions now more within the medical space. And then if you look at how other professionals are remunerated, most times we have doctors, doctors remunerations being stagnant and we have to fight sometimes. Sadly in Nigeria, you know, doctors have to go on strike to say, okay, we want an increase. And not just in Nigeria, even in the UK, about a month or two months ago, there was like a three day strike because doctors felt they were underpaid. So it's something you should really consider. The best that happens is that doctors are just okay. Yeah. They I know they don't typically get wealthy from clinical practice per se. Fine, you'll be able to eat three square meals per day, maybe rent a house. After like 15 to 20 years, you eventually build a house and then you can just take care of your family. But the picture people tend to have, you can just wake up one day and go on a vacation and all of that. It's not real if you want to depend solely on clinical practice yeah, alone. You have to other things. Yes, you have to have other things that you're doing in order to make money in quotes. Sometimes people tie the prestige, you know, of prestige in the sense of becoming a doctor also with money now um it's sad that in some settings being a doctor can even put you at disadvantage either people mm. will just hate on you they will feel people have this sense of entitlement you're a yeah. doctor you're supposed to do this you're supposed to probably even work for free you're not supposed to complain it's a noble profession we hear a lot of things that are demeaning you know so to say so if you're coming into medical school and you're saying i want to be a doctor because i'm going to make a lot of money yeah. and you know society will see that me is. like this superhuman that's not the reality it's not it's not what it if that's your pursuit we'll talk about the things that you should consider you know that will be what you come into medical school some of them will look like the opposites of this but if this is one of your major reasons of coming into medical school then definitely it's not what it you should have other reasons why you want to come to medical school Okay. Um, another reason is the work-life balance. Most yeah. doctors, in fact, I would say all doctors, don't have don't have healthy work-life balances. Yeah. 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 Most doctors have unhealthy work-life balance because you, you you talk about the the long hours of work, then the call hours. You you will find out that most doctors are friends with their fellow doctors. Talk about people in other departments. Go to med school, for instance, you see that most medical students just have friend groups of just medical students. They don't get to interact with people from other departments. Okay, sometimes also people from other um people that are non doctors do not some do not should I say they don't really understand the amount of time that is required of you to practice medicine. Yeah. Sometimes they'll feel neglected because yes. you're not giving them the time. They, they need you're yeah. not feeding their attention so they'll think you're being snobbish or they, yeah. they'll think you're being proud so this affects a lot of interactions we have our social cycles are drastically affected then um sometimes we tend to be alone the emotional yeah, support will true. not be there so the the work-life balance it's really really unhealthy if if that's what's mm. Yeah, so work-life balance now for some of you watching would yeah. translate to different things. For some people, it's the fact that you want to work from home. Now, largely, medicine doesn't allow you to work from home. Yeah, you have true. to be by the bedside. You have to be seeing patients. For some of you, it might be you can just wake up one day and feel like, you know what, I'm not going to work. I want to travel and just, you know, disappear for maybe a month or two months. Medicine, again, does not afford such liberty. Quite all right, you go on leaves, but all of that is scheduled and planned. Someone needs to be covering when you're absent. So work-life balance for someone coming into medical school I'm like if i'm a doctor i'll be able to have work-life balance that comes much later in the profession that's okay, after yeah. like the 12 years of investment maybe when you're not a consultant you have more liberty as regards the control of your time but during those six years you have to show up and that's one thing we experience as interns some days i wake up and i'm very exhausted yeah. and it's like you don't have a choice you just have to show up by 8 a.m you have to be where you are supposed to be you need to have done your work because unless you're sick you can now you know maybe take an official break and all of that but generally speaking tiredness is not an excuse you can't just say okay today i'm tired and i'm not going to work there will definitely be consequences you get so medical school training and in practice generally doesn't really afford one much work-life balance let's say all right so another point is the emotional toll um, most medical doctors are damaged even without knowing it. Yeah. You see, you just lost one patient, but you will move on to the next as say nothing happened. You understand? So, like, um, emotionally, the burden is a lot. The burden is too much. So, um, if you're looking to get into med school, this should be what you should consider. Are you 
are you going to be strong enough to handle it's not it's not as though it's healthy it's not healthy it's, yeah. it should be something that should be addressed yes. do you understand because um people just um people just think that because you're a doctor you should be able to handle this no everybody goes through mental health breakdowns do you yeah. understand so like it should be something that should be addressed really really so the toll is the emotional toll it's very very draining and it's sad at the same time you know, I remember one experience I've had during house job. That was during my pediatrics posting. You know, we had gone to the theater to try and resuscitate a child. And, you know, it didn't turn out well. Basically, we lost the child. And that morning, I was coming back from what some people call neonatal intensive care unit or, yeah. you know, special care baby unit, depending on where you work. And I was so sad. I was, probably I had what I would just call, for the sake of this interaction, acute depression. I have not experienced that level of sadness all my life because i saw you know i saw the mother crying on the theater table and i was i was pained okay. i just kept having you know flashbacks and trying to say okay maybe what went wrong what could we have done differently so it can take a toll on one emotionally yeah. even now that's on the hand of hand of you know clinical practice even as a medical student you see medical students sometimes having emotional breakdowns some can just stay randomly in the hostel and they are crying and you're asking what's the issue and it's just the stress and you have to now draw the line between being strong and not having human feelings because yeah. we are exposed to harm or things that are not normal for the average person and then that's where it now looks like you know doctors are seemingly tough and all of that but sometimes that toughness you see is as a result of the damage that's already happening so if you're someone that you know you're not very strong in terms of managing your emotions medical school may not be for you we've had students faint just by the sight of dead body yeah you know so <laughs> the funny things happen basically during the training so you really want to wait are you strong emotionally are you strong mentally to come and, and you face handle it tomorrow? criticism yes you understand because you'll be exposed to lots of criticism from your senior colleagues especially do you understand how would you take it when they i will not say insult i don't use that word but yeah. let's say constructively criticism. say things that would get to you how would you handle it sometimes most of these most of these things you hear can be demeaning if it's okay to use that word and it's it's not it's not okay yeah, yeah. I'm trying not okay. so more on my end um another reason you shouldn't go to medical school is because in quotes i can't think of anything else i've heard people say that and it's like the fact that you can't see yourself doing any other thing should not be a sole reason for you to feel medical medicine. school is you know what's there for you you just finished school you know high school secondary school and medical school is not the dump like it's not mm -hmm. okay i don't feel like doing any other thing maybe medicine. i should just choose medicine i should just yeah. show up like the demands are too much it's if it's not music you know where maybe you go three four years you just get a degree we're talking of almost eight years of training uh, in most settings almost eight years of training the time investment everything we've mentioned so far it's not something to come in uninformed yeah. because sometimes your motivation during the training will be the fact that i chose this course i looked into everything and i decided this was the best course for me i did not appear here by accident or by just happenstance you get so the fact that you're saying you know what nothing else is interesting me. so maybe yeah, this medicine everybody has been talking about i should just show up and give it a try it's a no 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 it's we have persons sometimes we drop from medical school intentionally other times is the school asking them advising them to withdraw now they call it advice but once they give you that that's like the end of medical school one now has to transfer to another department and you know finish undergraduate training so the fact that you're not seeing anything else should not be a reason for you to jump on the ship of medical school so even if you can't see anything else from where you are now try and research about medicine listen to the things we are saying really think about it and decide is medical school what's it for you from yeah. your perspective and you get to make that decision yeah um, another reason should be um the changing landscape of healthcare and refers to the dynamic nature of healthcare yeah. right now everything is tech health tech Very is true. a big and major thing right now it's booming it's growing so where does that keep job stability where does that keep certainty job Very certainty true. in the future there's a lot of there's a lot of uncertainties right now. Right now, I even hear AI has been, they're using AI right now to diagnose and yeah. um, do a lot of things as regards health. And um, another thing now is um, um, people will gradually shifting from the acute setting of 
um, provision of health care in hospitals. We now have ambulatory health services. Yeah. We now yes. have people that can do things in the acute setting, like um, um, the um, emergency services. These people yeah. are not doctors, but they provide these services, do you understand? So it's becoming a lot more diverse. So um, where does that keep job stability again? That's a question. So yeah. typically, medical doctors usually don't look for jobs. Like you yes. have your slot literally waiting for you because as people keep ascending the ladder, slots keep opening up. But like she's, she has said now, we're having AI take over a lot of things just by inputting your symptoms in an application. And the app will ask you a series of questions and you have a diagnosis that is in most instances correct. So really, where are we headed? Yeah, we are we going to have robots doing surgeries in the theater one day? These are things to ponder on before you jump on the ship of medical school. And even if you know your passion for medicine is so strong, you can still go for it, but at least carry technology along. Yes. Uh, the, the times are changing, the generations are having a shift. So you're coming to medical school, we're not having the analog pattern solely again. Get interested in tech, pick one or two things, because the world would leave people who feel reluctant you know, behind. So if you're coming into medical school in this age and time, be very interested in tech before you even start medical school. Start making your research, get one or two skills that might just help you somewhere along the line. Now for me, another reason um, people should not go to medical school is the adrenaline rush. Because, you know, when we watch these Hollywood medical series and movies, you know, as patients are coming in through the emergency, the trauma setting, you're just excited like, oh, wow, I think I should be this person. This doctor is so smart. When you see them doing those procedures and, you know, it's like action everywhere. And you think that's how the practice is. That's not uh -huh. how it is on most days. Yeah. In reality, all over the world now, you might even be so skilled and so passionate, but you don't have the equipment or the instruments that you need to save the life of, you know, your patients. Every other day, you might be managing chronic, chronically ill patients, you might be managing patients with cancers, having to give end-of-life counselings, and this is not the adrenaline rush that is painted for you in the movies you're watching, or maybe from the things that you're hearing. So like you said, again, the emotional toll it can take on you is more of a daily thing. Yes, we have these moments, you know, where we have the sparks of adrenaline rush. Maybe a patient that was so down, you yeah. see the patient recover, come to life, or currently we are in our ONG posting, when you see the newborn baby after delivery, beautiful. despite all the stress, so beautiful, yes, yeah. you know, we slide, so and there's that sense of fulfillment, really, yeah. no doubt about that. But on most days, it's not like that. Yeah. It's not like that. You get to lose patients, you get to see your patients, you can't do anything for you know what's happening but how do i stop this yeah. so, it's so the adrenaline rush that we see on tv is not a criteria so if you're the type that that is a motivation for you you really want to again consider. have self-reflection and have a number of considerations for you to finally make that decision all right yeah all right thank you very much i will see you on another episode yeah. still centered around this topic and that would be the reasons why you should go you to should medical go school because we are doctors yeah we don't look sad yes. we are happy people yes, you get exciting. so it's exciting <laughs> so yes we've given you we've given you this view but yeah. there's another side to it yeah. reasons why you should go to medical school so do watch out for that thank you for sticking up to this point if you're new on the channel please give a subscribe you know and then like this video expect more and more from this series i'll be seeing you on the next episode thank yeah. you